Hi, welcome to In Focus Recouched with Dora and Kent. It's <laughs> great to have you with us. You're going to love the program we have lined up for you today. Sue Rad is in to talk about those maxed out caffeine hits known as energy drinks. And we're also going to see an interview with a guy who I swear is on a natural non-stop high. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Old school gospel singer, Manuel Escorcio. Oh yeah, that interview was a lot of fun. I, yeah. I think it's well worth playing again. <laughs> but first up, let's take a look at a chat that I had a while back with Baptist pastor Carl Fays. He's had some great insights into the struggles people are having with the ideas of God and faith and what to do about it. Now, Carl, you're a, a local pastor down in the south of Sydney at Gaimia Baptist Church. You're a television personality and, and a radio personality. And lately I've noticed all, all over Twitter and all around Christian media and elsewhere, you've been plugging this new production that you've put together towards belief. What, what's that all about? Uh, Ken, it's a, we've, as you said, we've, we've been involved in media for a little while now and mm -hmm. did a couple of different series. In fact, a, a while ago on In Focus, we talked about the men's series that That's we right. had done, which is a great series, which is done in a studio, etc. I was watching, as most Christians do, uh, watching Richard Dawkins on Q&A and getting, you know, mildly um, aggravated by the whole process. Yeah. And remember thinking, like, there's got, there's got to be a way to respond to this. Mm. And, 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 in, and the kind of vitriol and disagreement, as it were, between those people of, of faith, uh, of all sorts of different faiths, but certainly Christian faith, and those people kind of from an atheist point of view, that's been around, that's always been around, that tension's always been around, the discussion's always been around, but now it's like somebody ramped up the tension involved. Mm. And, and, uh, and the dismissive comments and the dismissive nature of the general kind of tenure toward Christian faith, mm. the idea that if you, if you believe this, you're obviously an irrational person has never mm. given this a second thought. Yeah, yeah. And, and it was like, I just had this growing sense, you know, and I believe it was God calling us into this, which is the whole, how do we create a response? But the response, the response has got to be more than just you know, a, a deeply intellectual response. It needs mm. to kind of relate to as many people as possible. Mm. Is, so, is, is it the case, you think, Carl, that sometimes as, as Christians, we think we have all the answers, but sometimes we have the answers to the questions people aren't necessarily asking? Yes, is, yeah, that's, that's true. I mean, I think that when, if anybody thinks deeply about the, the issue of faith and belief, there's a, a number, of things that they, number of things that they really are struggling to understand. Mm. I think what you're getting at, though, is that that in the area of apologetics or giving a defense for your faith, it's mm. not being a, sorry for your faith, it's sure. sort of trying to defend your faith. Mm. In that area, we've tended to just go for the big issues. When we did some research, what we discovered, and this is what informed the program towards belief, mm. the people are actually, part of the issue is actually the church. Mm. And we have to sort of give some... Uh, responses to how the community views the church mm. and that's part of this series yeah. towards belief. It's interesting that you say that because you um, worked with McCrindle yes. Research didn't you and got together um, I think I assume these were the, the top 14 sort of faith blockers or yes. that really turn people off church and Christianity you know number one 53 percent this is a majority of people said church abuse yeah you know we've got three concurrent um, inquiries happening at the minute into institutional responses to child abuse and the church is unfortunately yeah. front and centre in, in that discussion. And this is turning people off. We've got hypocrisy here, being judgmental, religious wars, suffering and that's probably one you know we might have traditionally sort of yep. thought yeah okay well that's an obvious one. Issues around money you know church is always asking for money. You know, homosexuality there's, there's a, and evolution is, is down there towards the bottom but certainly these are the questions people are asking. Yeah, and, w and when, we when we made the program, the program is 10 shows. We, mm -hmm. we deal with nine issues, so we kind of collapsed some of the issues together. For sure. instance, abuse and hypocrisy mm. are, are very similar issues. Sure. Homosexuality is completely different. Yep. But that, they, they are very similar issues, mm. and so we, we deal with that. And it's, it's not really kind of, you can't justify what's happened. That's the whole point. You have yeah, to say yeah. that here's, here's what's happened. Here's how the church is responding. Mm. And we also have on that show, it's, it's a stunning episode because we actually meet a guy who tells his story of abuse, but he now works as a pastor in a church oh, and wow. how he's come through it and how he still struggles to forgive. Mm. It's, it's, not this, it's not this sort of nice, glowing, simple, easy mm. kind of um, story, but he talks about the fact that he doesn't equate 
that abuse and that person with the church and God mm, mm. and that what he did was an abomination. And that's the separation some people are having difficulty yep. making. Isn't and it? you can understand absolutely and totally why they, why they struggle with, mm. with making that separation. So what we tried to do is to try and as much as we can answer nine of those blockers. And, mm. look, and in the end, um, the research is sort of not totally complex, but a little complex. So we, we layer a couple of different ways of looking at it yep. in the end. Uh, uh, suffering is very high on uh, as well because that's just a kind of perennial question about sure. how you deal with it's that. It's eternal. So, I mean, look, when a Christian media organisation puts out a series like this, other Christians are generally falling all over you with praise and saying how wonderful this is and how professional it is. But that's not your audience, is it? What, what kind of response are you getting from people who actually don't have a strong faith or are asking questions about faith? Well, Ken, it's really new, so we haven't had a lot of it yet. Yeah. So it's just been out in the last couple of weeks. Uh, look, we've, we've, got, we've got two audiences we think we're aiming at. Yeah. One audience, and it's a big audience, and it, it has enormous need, and that is people in the church, mm. people of faith. If you ask them, are you a Christian? They'd say, yes, I am. I go to church relatively regularly. Mm -hmm. If you said to them, are you confident in your faith? Most of them would go, I'm not, you know, yes. Yeah, we all have questions. Yeah, absolutely. And, and, and I think you know, in Australia and in Western countries, people are at the moment badgered into fearful silence. Mm. They, they don't want to talk about their faith because they just, they think they're going to get their head kicked in. Mm. And so they just, and, and they're not, they believe it because they feel it, but they're not confident to mm. be able mm. to express it. We want to give them a set of kind of, ideas mm. and, and a way into conversations that says you can be confident in this space. Mm. There are brilliant people across the world who are, will give you confidence in this space. Mm. So that's one group. The other group are those that aren't in the church, but are actually open. Mm. Now, look, you know, the kind of, if, you know, using Richard Dawkins as a caricature, the, the kind yeah. of militant, radical atheist, this, this series probably won't change their mind because there's not a lot that will. Mm. So it's not really aimed at them. Sure. Where it's aimed is the kind of those that are, are not in, self-selecting, not Christians, but they're open. Yeah. And what they need is a bit more information. So that's, what, that's the space we're aiming at. Okay. And if, um, just as we finish off, um, if our viewers are you're interested in getting a, a hold of this series, Beyond Belief, it's a double DVD set, uh, where would they go about doing that? Well, uh, towardsbelief.org.au, uh, uh, so okay. towardsbelief.org.au is a website and you can go there and just order on the website. Okay. It's uh, right there on your screen. Yeah. Kurong uh, shops will, uh, and most Christian bookshops are stocking it. Mm -hmm. And so you can get it in both of those places. So go to, go to Kurong, they've got it stocked mm -hmm. and or go to to towardsbelief.org.au. We'd love to send one out. Okay, well, sounds like a fascinating resource. Thanks so much for your, uh, for your company and those insights today, Carl. Good on you, Ken. You know, Ken, I think I'd really like to take a look at that series. It deals with the questions that people actually have about mm. faith rather than focusing on what church people find important. Yeah, it's an important shift in perspective, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I actually checked out the Towards Belief website and it looks like the video series is still very much available. In fact, they even won a couple of prizes for it. Oh, awesome. Mm. Anyway, we'll take a quick break. We'll be back in just a moment. We live our lives running around, rarely stopping to ask ourselves where we're going and what our final destination is. In the end, our lives become little more than routine. Step beyond and discover a path that offers comfort, love and hope. Visit hopeoffer.com forward slash step beyond or call 1300 300 389 for your free copy today. Planning your future can be a daunting task. What you want to do, who you want to be, and the road ahead can often be unpredictable. No one really knows what the future holds. Avondale, it's education designed for life. We're going to start with some soybeans. Use some chickpeas, a onion, we have a teaspoon of salt, slice some tomatoes, slice some cucumber, some red onion just to give it a bit of freshness. So just make little falafels like this. They just smell amazing. Let's make our tahini dressing. Let's get in some tomatoes, cucumbers, some falafels. Drizzle some of this lovely dressing. All you need to do is roll it up and you've got a delicious lunch for your family.
Hi, welcome back. Now, Dora, here's something that I think that you and your hip young friends are going to be interested in. <laughs> um, only old people say hip, well, Kent. <laughs> my point exactly. Do you find, Dora, that the people you hang around with mm -hmm. are into energy drinks? Um, I find that the ones who are in like really stressful jobs or really physical jobs mm -hmm. are definitely into oh, them. Okay. Well, I think you'll probably be interested then to hear what Sue Rad has to say about energy drinks. Let's check it out. And you're here to talk about energy drinks. Now, I'm a bit tired. Should we, uh, should we imbibe? Uh, I don't think so, unless you want to find yourself in an emergency department of a hospital. It, it, uh, <laughs> an emergency department? Isn't that a bit it, extreme? No, it could be as drastic as that, James. Uh -huh. Actually, the latest research just published in the Medical Journal of Australia mm -hmm. has shown that the number of toxic reactions and the number of serious hospitalizations due to these so-called energy drinks right. has significantly increased over a seven-year period in Australia. So when somebody's admitted to the emergency room for drinking uh, too many of these, uh, how, many, how many are we talking about? Well, on average, the New South Wales Poisons Information mm -hmm. uh, Centre, who collates the data, has shown that the number of average drinks taken when people get really violently ill mm -hmm. is five. Um, so right. we're talking really the equivalent of seven and a half to ten cups of instant coffee wow. or 15 cans of Coke. So one serve of these right. gives you a lot more caffeine than something else which you know has a lot of caffeine in it. And that's sure. the problem because you can't guess how much caffeine is in these drinks. These are loaded with caffeine. I guess that's why they're energy drinks, right? Well, that's why they're called energy drinks, uh -huh. but there's a lot more to the word energy than just caffeine. Sure. But pretty much they're just sugary drinks, slightly right. sweetened. Um, they throw in a few vitamins mm -hmm. for good measure, ginseng, and it all sounds so very exotic. <laughs> but the primary ingredient right. there that makes it all happen is caffeine, and they also have another source of caffeine, often called guarana, which is a right. natural source of caffeine. So they're loaded with caffeine. Now, when, when kids are out consuming these. Is this a yeah. big, I should say, is this a bigger problem among young people or is this uh, Absolutely. elderly or middle-aged? They spend or yeah. about $15 million per year marketing mm -hmm. these drinks and they specifically in target, in Australia, right. young people, mm -hmm. uh, young professionals. These right. are very popular, say, at dance parties. Right. Kids go to town with these drinks because, right. of course, it helps them stay up all night. <laughs> and people have them, you know, for endurance, sure. to, to aid their concentration, to sort of, you but know, get a But those seem like all legitimate reasons to, to drink this stuff. <laughs> well, except that when you have a lot of caffeine, mm -hmm. you have a lot of problems. You start right. getting heart palpitations. You okay. start getting tremors. You start becoming very agitated. Sure. In fact, the worst effects could be that you could have a heart attack. And there have wow. been deaths linked with the consumption of energy drinks, including right here in Australia. There was a young guy who had a heart attack because wow. he had these drinks. And, and died. A and young he died. guy died. In from fact, a patient this stuff. at our clinic, a young right. patient that recently came for another thing altogether, said that she used to drink them because when she drank them, she wasn't hungry. So that helped her uh -huh. to lose weight. Right. However, she found herself also in a hospital emergency department. Sure. Um, and to cut a long story short, um, now she has some permanent heart damage because wow. she consumed them. And she says, I have no idea why well, I have I, even I, touched I guess them. When you're young, your body's still developing, and, and to have this stuff sort of thrown at you, I know that some of the them are very small. Are they, are they well, less yeah. innocuous? Are they, you are, are now getting these or pocket rockets right, or okay. shots. Um, some of them have as much caffeine, for example, as what's included in the regular dosage. So you can see how easy it right. is to overdose potentially on caffeine when you're having these and drinks. And of course they're all aimed at, at, at young people, as you said. Mm. And, it's just it's unconscionable, isn't it? Mm. And I'm looking, and there's a warning label, but you, uh, you know, I need my glasses <laughs> it's on. It's microscopic. And, you know, it's microscopic. <laughs> and they <laughs> usually say, you know, stick to one, one at a time. Uh, right. But who sticks to one at a time? Sure. And it's not just young people, James. Uh, yeah. Older people, if I may say, middle-aged right. people also use them when they're travelling. Sure. Um, you know, instead of grabbing a cup of right. coffee. The thing is, when you have coffee or a cola right. drink, you're sort of expecting to get the jolt from right. the caffeine, and you kind of know what your limits are. Mm -hmm. You won't know what your limit is. With that because there's so much hidden there and you can't feel it the same way. So what's the alternative? I'm, you're tired, you just yeah. don't feel like you can give any more. If you don't go with an energy drink, mm. what should you do? Well, that's a really good question, an important question. Sometimes when we're so tired, we, we look for anything to override those cues and those right. signals. But perhaps what we should do is actually stop, <laughs> rest, <laughs> and revive. So, um, take right. a break. I mean, it's our body telling us mm -hmm. that we need a break. So right. why should we be, in fact, overriding right. it artificially 
um, and pressing those buttons when the body all, all the body wants to do is have a break. Let's have a break. So just live with have the natural break. cycles that your body's telling you. Well, thank you so much, Sue. Uh, Sue's uh, web address is right there on the screen. I'm sure many of you will want to go there for more information. Wow, we have been warned. Yeah, it's kind of <laughs> scary, isn't it? Mm -hmm. That a product that is that sort of readily available on yeah. the shelf can do serious damage. I know. But look, it's probably better than underage kids getting into binge drinking alcohol. Yeah, true. But still, when I have kids, they are not going anywhere near energy drinks. Well, fair enough. <laughs> Good luck with that. <laughs> Time for a break now. We'll see you in a sec. Father, I can't connect the dots through the little that I understand. What words can I say to reach you? How can I know that you are there, listening, hearing, caring? My words are broken, weak and powerless. But I know your power is limitless. What can I say? Peaceful, quiet, calm. The perfect place to relax. Sometimes. The mountain blew apart with the force of a 24 megaton bomb, devastating 150,000 acres of forest. The mushroom cloud looked like a nuclear blast, ash covering everything, temperatures reaching as much as 600 degrees. To receive a free DVD of the documentary Beyond Warning, visit hopeoffer.com forward slash warning or call 1300 300 389. Onions add great sweetness and flavour and a good base to any curry. Going to add some ginger, some garlic. Look at that, nice and chunky. So we've got our spices, gives it kind of a Sri Lankan feel. Add some tomatoes, tomato paste, some honey. Roasted vegetables in these kind of dishes are always great. But we add some creaminess to it. And that dish is now finished, ready to hit the table. I recommend you to give it a try, and it's so, so easy. Hi, welcome back. Now, one of the most colourful characters that has graced the record in Focus Set would have to be Manuel Escorcio. Oh, yeah. Now, this guy does not need an energy drink. <laughs> He's just so passionate about life. Yeah. <laughs> Let's take a look at the interview. It's a pleasure to welcome Manuel Maria Lamarck Escorcio to the set. Now, Manuel, I don't often get a chance to say a name quite that long or that grand, even poetic. Uh, it's a Portuguese name, isn't I'm it? I'm so impressed with you. The pronunciation is perfect. Manuel <laughs> Escorcio was my father. Right. Maria Lamarck was my mother's name and, and surname. What they do, the Portuguese with this custom, they just combine everything. It's kind of more confusing. Isn't that fun? It, it, it's, <laughs> it, it's grand and it's poetic. And, and I think it, it, it's, it's a beautiful name for someone who's involved in opera because we think of the sort of intricate complex uh, and beauty of opera singing and, and you were the principal tenor of the Cape Town Opera for many years. Yes I was, I sang all the Mozarts and all the Rossinis and all the, the Verdi stuff and so on but uh, in 1990 something happened I, I gave my heart completely to the Lord mm -hmm. I was busy recording in the studio and somebody just came and shoved a piece of music in front of me I mm -hmm. said you need to look at that, I said what was that I have returned to the God of my father the story of the, of the prodigal son mm -hmm. and I went home and, 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 and the good Lord in his love and mercy just impressed upon my heart that I should come back to him fully. I used to be the big boy in South Africa, right. the big star and all sorts of things. So you've, been, you've been on television there, you've yes. put out a number of yes. CDs, you've yes. been... Uh, you've 48. Toured. <laughs> Thank you, just in case you get it right. <laughs> and, and, and some of them are very, very big selling uh, productions. Yes. And um, I guess you've, you've sung some of the major roles in opera. 
Yes, I did, and with the major orchestras and so on. But strangely enough, I don't. I, the moment I gave my heart to the mm-hmm. Lord completely, uh, it's kind of like the Lord killed the, the, the passion for that. Mm-hmm. I don't miss it. I don't long for mm-hmm. it at all. And then from then on, we, we started recording a lot of uh, gospel CDs. And the, the focus sure. then became Jesus and the ministry. That's why I hope as the people look at this interview right. that they'll forget about manual. <laughs> but they will find Emmanuel, oh, the boy, that's, God that's with beautiful. us. That is absolutely important now, to me. The the song that kind of made this 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 great transition in your life yes. was the song called "I Have Returned to the God of My Fathers." The I same have lady, to the God of My Fathers, Mary John Wilkin, mm-hmm. who wrote "One Day at a Time," okay. and who became one of my greatest friends in in in, in Nashville, in Tennessee. Right. I visited her. I've recorded a number of her songs, and when she, I actually sent her a CD via via mm. the, the post. And right. she received and she called me in Sacramento, in California. California. Mm-hmm. I used to work for It Is Written oh, as right. their international guest artist mm-hmm. for Mark Finley. Right. So I worked extensively in the United States. And the lady, uh, Mary John, wanted to meet me. And I mm-hmm. thought, I am so privileged. So we had a, a big partnership, I think it was in Tennessee, in, in, in Pigeon Forge. And I asked Mark, may I invite her? Oh, of course. I mean, one of the greatest composers on, you know, right. ever. Right, yeah. yeah. And so she came. And that night she actually got up on stage, Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was after my fourth song, and she sang for me Um, uh, one day at a time at the piano accompanying yourself. Oh, that's lovely. Wasn't that beautiful? Uh, You know know what's interesting to me is that a song converted your heart. Yes. And I think that's the power of uh, music and, and inspirational music. Now, one of the things I'd like to do, because it's no use talking to a wonderful singer without at least exposing our audience to a little <laughs> bit of your music, and I'd like to show uh, our audience a, a little clip of a song that you wrote it, called uh, Drinking Out of My From My Saucer. saucer. Now, no, no, i, I got to get this straight, because I, obviously most of us will drink out of a cup. Yeah, Why out of the saucer? I'll tell you what, but you forgot the second phrase. Dr- I'm drinking out of my saucer because my cup has overflowed. Oh, there we go. Now, when I I got in South Africa, understand I could not speak a word of English, right. I couldn't speak a word of Afrikaans, uh-huh. I only spoke French to my mother, Portuguese to my father. Right. So what happened? I get invited to an Afrikaans home, mm. and the gentleman who is now passed away, was the, the elder of our church, mm. uh, says, would you like red bush tea? Now, uh, what do I know about Roy Bosch tea, red uh-huh. bush tea? Nothing. He says, that's good Adventist tea. Now, I'm trying to, to <laughs> co- 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 converse with him. His English was bad, mine was non-existent, uh-huh. and eventually he says, I will make red bush tea for you. You must taste it, uh-huh. not the other bad tea. So he makes it, and all of a sudden, as I'm watching uh, uh, Brother Theron, mm-hmm. I, I watch him pouring, uh, you know, the tea from the cup onto the sauce, and then he goes. <laughs> and my eyes go big. And that image stayed until one day I wrote the song, especially for Uncle Theron, uh-huh. who was no longer with us. But because the Lord has blessed me so much, you know what I mean? It's The cup is running over, so drink it out of the sauce. Well, let's take a quick look at the song, and then we'll come back and talk about your life. I don't have a lot of riches. Sometimes the going is tough. But I got friends all around. That makes me rich enough I thank God for His blessings And the mercies He bestows I'm drinking from my saucer Cause my cup has overflowed Well, that was beautiful, Manuel. And uh, really very touching. But I know that life hasn't all been about uh, easy, uh, great, wonderful things, and that you lost your son just uh, not too many years ago. Mm-hmm. How uh, did that happen? James, uh, a couple of the kids were walking down in Cape Town. Mm-hmm. You visited Cape Town already. And uh, from the rocks, it's, it's, it's open sea. And as you know, the currents you know, are not very, very good. And sea temperature is 12, 12 degrees. And, 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 and Ryan just slipped from the rocks and went tumbling, boom, 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 down, down there. And mm-hmm. Chandra, my Chandra, my son, just took his shirt off and jumped in. We never recovered the bodies. So, so, so your, your son's friend fell into this yeah. very treacherous yeah. ocean. Very, and, very. And, and your son? jumped in on yes. his own accord yes. to save him. Yes, so and both boys were taken. Wow. We never recovered the bodies. But this the, <laughs> revelation says the sea will give me back my son. Mm. Number two, while well, the word of God says there's no greater love than you giving up your life 
for somebody else. That's Isn't right. that uh, a typical uh, Jesus it is. giving his life for us? What more can move the heart than knowing that somebody loved me so much? It's really a deep, to the deep extent thing. Of death, very uh, deep. Looking back on that experience, which was just, I think it must be the hardest thing. I've read that and I have children. I can imagine it. The most difficult thing in life is to lose a child. Yes. How did you uh, relate to that spiritually? I'll tell you right now. There is no such thing as trying to explain things like that. It cannot, James. It's not logical. Mm. It's like a chunk that has been taken out of you, like a you know a, a shark has bitten a, a piece of you. You can't you can't put put it back. You know That's what I mean. Right. But in between, this is where you cannot accept it rationally. Mm. You have by faith to simply say, Lord, I trust you. I, I don't know how it works, but ultimately your plan will be revealed later on. One day in heaven, I, I hope I can sit down with the Lord and say, w would you stop the, just the, the whole universe? Uh, do you remember that song? We'll talk it over in the by and by. Yeah, sure. Lord, just explain, work it backwards. Sure. And then I know things will be That's in place. Beautiful. Simple as that. Now, one of the things that, that I know about great artists is that they often express in a way the, the the deep things in their in their soul in the in, in their deepest innermost parts through their music you have a you have a brand new cd out and maybe i'll just just share this with our audience this is a this is the cover is that uh, me uh, <laughs> that's, that's you uh, but you're a lot more engaging in real life uh this is a uh, beautiful beautiful music here um I, I guess you pull from some of these deep experiences that you've gone through to express your love and your faith for God through your music. For so many years, I wanted to find an Adventist lyricist, an Adventist composer, mm -hmm. and obviously music that we, our church, could relate. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, this one, Jesus, Lovely Savior, was written all by, composed by Vil Dunbar, mm -hmm. which was the lady who discovered me. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, the lady who wrote all the lyrics just passed away, so she will never hear that. She will hear in heaven. But this is what I can considered to be good Adventist music. Now, I work a lot here, here in Australia, mm -hmm. also with David Quine. We are planning some great stuff once again within the Adventist framework. We always borrow from other composers. Right. Am I correct? But this is to me what I call a good Adventist solid music, which falls within the ears with our uh, Christocentric message. So this is why I've done this at this late stage of my career. We have to go now, but just before Already? we go, uh, yeah, oh. where can somebody get a copy of this? Uh, ABCs, we're going to go to the Adventist, them, so Adventist, 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 Adventist Bookstore. Bookstore. Okay. That's the place and to we go. Have, we have the uh, website right there if you want to get a copy of Manuel Escorcio's latest CD. It doesn't have your full name, though, Manuel. No. <laughs> Boy, a really fun guy, isn't he? Yeah, but that story about how his son died, so sad. Mm. It would have taken a lot of faith to accept something like that. Yeah, it would be really tough. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for your company this week. We really hope you enjoy the program. If you want to share today's episode or something fun from a previous week, just visit our website, infocus.org.au. Please do. We'll see you next time. Until then, God bless. Mm.